call the meeting to order. First up is to approve the agenda for the evening. Does anybody have anything they'd like to add to the agenda this time? I have um, just a couple of things. <clears throat> I don't know if we have to make it a, an item, but we need to set our times for meeting for October. Um, so maybe we just add that <clears throat> to the bottom. Okay. So we're just setting our meetings for October because one of our meetings lands on Columbus Day. So we, we will set, um, we'll call it uh, meeting schedule for October. Put that down at the bottom. <clears throat> um, also, I, if it's okay with everybody, I'd like to see that Dylan's here. Joyce has an appointment for 615, but maybe we could list Dylan's as an appointment for say 630. That way he doesn't have to stay here very long. Right. Um, so if everybody's okay with that, move, move uh, Dylan up to 615 right behind Joyce as an appointment. Talk about um, his piece of property. I also just wanted to add, um, we can bring it up in other business or, or we can put it down here. Um, but this weekend with the Ford Festival, that I received a couple of comments in regards to the uh, graffiti on the bridge here. As quite a bit of people were walking over the bridge. There's a lot of graffiti that's been spray painted. And I know it's not our property, it's the state's property, but maybe we can talk about what our options are. Maybe we could just add that in the bottom there somewhere. Well, isn't it when the, they finish the bridge, they give it to the county bevel for maintenance? That bridge is. Yeah, it so is, maybe it could be covered. It's the other bridge that's not on Church Street. The, I think it's the bridge. Uh, the bridge over on. Oh, this one's there. The, the River Street. Yeah, the River Street. Is that the one? I have kind of looked at the green side. So we'll just add uh, I item. I guess is that. Well, he's. And when were they replaced? At the same time or different time? This was replaced about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Street, Street. Just after I remember yeah. Yeah. So we'll just call it, Lisa, we'll just call that one Church Street Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll look at okay. yeah. and see what's Under Church Street Bridge. So we should have, um, so reports, motions, and ordinances. We have, uh, towards the bottom, we have a uh, meeting scheduled for October. Church Street Bridge, right? And then we put Dylan in for a 6:30 appointment, yeah. Which kind of takes him out of the bottom. Right. Yeah. All right. Any further changes? Uh, there is nothing on there for executive session. Is there any executive sessions for this evening? Nothing more. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Two seconds. Oh, have it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Got all that, Lisa? Yep. All right. All right. Next up is public comment or inquiry. This would be anything that's not on the agenda for this evening. And now would be the time to bring that up. If anybody has anything that's not on the agenda tonight? Hearing none, we'll go on. Joyce is on for, we have you for 615, but you're all set now to talk about your piece of property? Right. Okay, so we'll. I'd like to get to her up and hear a little better when, when you answer my questions or I can hear what you say as well as what I say. Okay. And if, or if you need to, if, if you need me to repeat things, we can repeat them. That's fine, too. Yeah, she's going to get to Just a little better. Kind of right, more direct. Than that. I was surprised 
that my uh, store down here was just barely put on the market. And when it did, um, she told me that there would be no water used or water of any kind. So for three months, the toilet didn't even get flushed. This, this gentleman that's in there is not the, not the most reliable. Apparently didn't even do business at all. So um, I guess what I was most concerned about was that I've been reading and reading and reading about all the nice meetings and everything, and most of them have been, a lot of them have been about improving the main street of Bethel. And my husband, when he built the store, said that he hoped that everybody would take the hint and do things to improve the, the center of Bethel. He liked to have it look extremely nice. And so uh, when we had to close that, of course, I felt bad because that was, that was supposed to be taken care of when he died. But we couldn't do it, so um, I couldn't understand why this bill was no, no water or sewer usage at all in our store was $555. And that was almost, almost triple what it had been. So I guess my explanation from you would be that why are you taking uh, those, those avenues do things when we're trying very desperately to keep a beautiful center of town. I don't understand why all of a sudden, bang, we're getting these huge water bills. My water bills are almost every three months what my taxes are. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't really want relief from it because I know other people have had the same thing and, and the, the uh, water is regulated, it has to be. I know there's a big debt on the water, but uh, number one, I think that they could consider a little bit about uh, us people that are trying to keep our houses and stay in our houses as long as we can as elderly. <laughs> no one to say elderly, but that's part of that. And, there are a lot of, of women in town that are living by choice. I'm not saying anybody's shoving them to it, but by choice we want to live in our homes. And uh, I, I just think the consideration should be given a little more to those people that are trying very desperately to keep things nice. They're trying desperately to keep their homes nice so that it'll be a, an attractive place to live. And uh, hopefully, we don't want to be non-supportive. I, I want to support that school. I had five children go through that school, and I love that school. And I want to support it. And I want to support the water, but uh, this is kind of an appeal on my part for all the others that are living in town that are having the same thing done to them. And I don't say you should do it on every portion of the property. I, I think we should do it on, on uh, certain properties like mine <coughs> as long as we can. But if we're the ones that have got to carry the load now, well, you've got your explanation. And, and uh, I just sort of, feel like we're appealing, or I'm appealing to you to consider maybe not cutting it in half or anything like that, but at least giving it a, giving it a shot to, to uh, reduce it a little more manageable for us that are trying so hard to keep the town as nice as we can. I guess that's about it. <laughs> so I guess what I can do, Joyce, is um, just kind of take you through the reasoning behind the uh, 
the new water, water policy that, well, new addendum to the water policy that we adopted a few months ago, which was, we've had a, you know, a water ordinance slash policy in the town of Bethel for ages, uh, and, but we've never really followed it as we should have. Um, so there's been a lot of things in there, like one thing, like in your particular case with the vacancy rate, um, is the vacancy rate in the past, for, for whatever reasons, there were numbers that were picked. Water was $25, and I think sewer was $50, or something like that. And if you weren't, you could, anybody, uh, resident or a commercial piece of property could, if, if you didn't have anything going on in the building, you could ask for a vacancy rate. What we found out, you know, well, the first thing is, to back up, is, as everybody knows, is the cost of doing business for our utilities in this town outweighed the revenue that we were collecting. So it was costing us more than we were collecting. So first we had to examine what was going on there. So um, what Greg and, and us had put together was to see what, what actually is it, how much does it cost to actually run this water business or sewer business, right? Um, and what we found out pretty quickly was about 80% of the cost of the, of the infrastructure and water and sewer is fixed. So fixed being, no matter if we deliver you a service inside your house or not, the service from starting at the treatment plant or, or the wellheads to your house, the pipes, everything, the people um, to maintain it is 80% of the, the cost. Um, and then the smaller piece of the cost is really from your curb stop to your house of using the water. Um, what we um, also found at that time is in our ordinance, we had it in there that stated um, that a vacancy rate should be the fixed cost of the service. Um, so like for example, with water, it was $25 for water. But going through and doing the analysis of how much it costs us to deliver water to a home, at 80%, we were charging, so let's say if you were on vacancy, right? We were charging you $25, but it was really costing the town 90. So that, and you, you could see if you add all these up, that gets you into a position where, where it costs you more money than you're taking in, so we have a negative, right? So, um, so we went through that exercise to figure out what the true, what the true cost of like a vacancy would be, um, which we, it's, the good thing about it is in our, our policy it states that it should be the fixed cost of the system. We, we were just never following it. Um, so with the addendum to the policy, we, um, we, if someone was gonna go on vacancy, then we wanted to at least cover the fixed cost of the water. So that doesn't include the water that goes inside your house. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we looked at too was uh, on the commercial end of things, not, not on the res residential, is pretty easy. <clears throat> if you're not home and you wanna go on vacancy rate, it's a matter of um, going out, shutting the water off, you know, let's say if you go to Florida for the winter, six months, shut the water off, go to Florida, right? It's pretty easy, it's one house, one thing. If you have a building in town, well, you know it does, uh -huh. no, but I'm saying it could. If you have a building in town, and let's say you have a building that has four apartments, and let's say two of your apartments are rented and two are vacant, right? We have really no way of putting your account on vacancy rate because you have one curb stop or water inlet into your, into your uh, commercial property. Oh, three so what what had happened in some in doing some past things is there were some accounts that let's say had uh, one water occupancy, but say two or three vacancies, and they were on vacancy rate. So um, that was cost that was incurred to the system that we weren't collecting any revenue from. So what we had determined after doing our assignments was that. Um, in the past, there was a vacancy rate that you could take if you were a commercial property or a residential property. <clears throat> what we adopted for the policy uh, amendment was that we would leave it with the residential so there still is a vacancy rate if you wanna be a resident. So if you wanna, 
um, if you're not going to be home for a period of time or say you're in the process of selling your house and it's on the market and you take shut the water off, that you can go on to the vacancy rate. But the vacancy rate has raised. It went from $25 up to about $90. Roughly $90. Um, so just to cover the fixed cost of the water that goes to the house. Um, also now there's, there's a fee to come out and have someone because it takes Someone's got to walk out there, someone's got to turn off the water, and at some point someone's got to turn the water back on if it goes back on. So there's a fee incurred to do that. Um, commercial, commercial properties, which is affecting you, Joyce, is we determined that it was difficult to offer a vacancy rate. We're doing a vacant, vacant, so vacant. So we took the vacancy rate away. Now- so she's still in there. Well, what I did, Joyce, is I went back and looked through your account a little bit. And <clears throat> so up until, for, for whatever reason, uh, up until March of 2017, you, you were paying, so each person, well, I'll just back up. So your, your facility that you have <coughs> is what they call three equivalency units. And everything, everything is, is done in units. <coughs> so based upon the layout and certain fixtures of your uh, place, it had three equivalency units at, at first. So <clears throat> some of your bills that you used to have, um, and then at, at, in March of 2017, your account went on to the vacancy rate. So you were paying vacancy for three waters and three sewers at your residence, or at your, um, establishment <clears throat> and then now you're seeing the big thing is because you went from paying a certain rate on vacancy rate to now actually paying the EU rate um, but at the same time the town had looked at your account and where before before March of 2017 you were getting you were being charged on three equivalency units so three units I know. My husband did. And, and what, and what um, Greg and Therese had done is they'd gone through and um, you're now, you're not billed on three of them anymore. You're billed on just under two, 1 1.9. So you're being billed for less equivalency units than you were in the past. On a higher rate. Well, the reason why you're seeing a higher rate is because your account for a period of time, for a year and a half, was on, on vacancy rate for some reason. So when you said that you were paying a certain amount, I don't want to discuss your financials, but when you were, um, when you said that you were paying a certain amount, your account was on vacancy at that point, where now there is no vacancy rate. So now you're actually paying on that 1.9 uh, equivalency unit, which is the, the new bill that you had got. And if you go back and you look at what your bill just was versus what your bill was prior to March of 2017, um, you were paying higher than that prior to March 2017 if you look in your records. So, so now what happens if uh, the, the store is currently for sale, when uh, you sell the store, mm -hmm. um, would it be more profitable to open up those apartment houses and let them sell heroin every week. <laughs> no. That's what they were doing. And I, I didn't like that. Right. That's why I vacancy the place. Mm -hmm. But see, this is all what I saw was improvement tobacco. And now it, it doesn't act like they're anybody even considering that. It sounds to me like they're just us people that are still here and, and seem to have money enough. They want us to carry the load. Well, and I don't know what to, uh, I want to sell, of course I want to sell it. What, but I didn't, nothing left of me, I mean, no time left. So I figure I want to sell it, and, but I know one bill is gonna make that much difference. Right. But I still think that you should kind of give it a little consideration as to, what, what I'm trying to do, 
for the town, but it sounds to me like it's the town's going to do what it wants, so and I'm not going to benefit it anyway, either way. Well, what we, what we had to do, Joyce, is make a I know you had a, an ordinance. A fair, a fair and non-biased resolution for everybody. So regardless of you know who they are, what their name is, what their sex is, how old they are, everybody is. It's in the ordinance. Pays the same thing. Um, one one thing that you could do, um, you know, we are the board of commissioners for water. Is you know if you're going through a period of time where you're trying to sell the place or say trying to fix the place up to to renovate, you could come to the board with a proposal. Um, I, we can't change your equivalency units or your pay, um, but if you brought us a proposal based upon, you know, I'm trying to sell it, I'm uh, within a period of time, or I'm trying to renovate it within a period of time, uh, then we can take a look at that proposal and, you know, as a board, and we could, you know, give you a yay or nay on on different, you know, whatever that proposal might be that you have for us. Um, but as a, um, but as a town, we've set the policy. Well, we've always had the policy. We've met. We're following the policy now, and then we made some amendments to the policy. Um, so we can't change that. You said you had a new ordinance that uh, um, you have to get charged the vacancy. Anymore. Not for commercial, no. No, for commercial. And, then, and to me, the commercial people are the people that are trying to save that, save the place. What are, what's, what's the balance there? Well, why, why are we trying to save the town if we're the ones that we're going to have to suffer terribly for it? <clears throat> Well, we're trying. I mean, we're trying to work with businesses. Dylan's here tonight to talk about his property. Um, I mean, I would say as a board, we're more and willing to work with individual businesses on on each individual circumstance. Um, but as a whole, as a group for the town, you know, the policy is the policy, um, and there was the policy's always been there. We I made, know that we made a couple of very very small amendments to it. But we never, as a town, never followed our own policy. That was the issue. So we, in some cases, we got ourselves into this mess ourselves, just not following our own policy. Um, so what we've done now is to say, well, one, we need to follow our own policy. And two, we made a couple of small amendments to fix some of the, um, some of the other issues that we had in regards to the system. Um, but I think if you went back and looked at what you were, if, if you went back through your books of what you were being charged for water and sewer prior to March of 2017, you would see that your bill that you have now is less than the bill you were getting before, in your case. Um, and, and if you need to, I'm sure probably um, Therese or Greg would be more than happy to sit down with you and, and go through um, your bills and explain to you, um, you know, w why you're being billed a certain way based upon, you know, your history on on the building, and they might be able to help you with any type of proposal that you'd like to take to the board, which is us, um, in regards to selling or renovating um, the space. That helps you. But as far so as so, what would you say about? What would the proposal be? It would be based on how much I'm selling the building for? Well, no, a proposal could be anything like, um, uh, you know, Dylan, Dylan, you know, for instance, Dylan's here tonight. Dylan's got the place for behind here. Yeah. And he's looking yeah. at re renovating it that he just purchased. And, you know, he is, uh, he actually was sitting, well, not in the same seat, he was sitting over there, but um, he was sitting here a couple weeks ago and um, had almost the exact same questions that you have tonight, Joyce. Uh -huh. And our recommendations for, for Dylan was to go uh, sit down with Greg and Therese, which he did. Yeah. Because um, uh, he's trying to renovate this uh, parcel. Right. And come up with a proposal to the, the Board of Commissioners. And, um, and, you know, we're more than happy to hear proposals. I can't 
tell you it's 100% yes or 100% no, but we're more than welcome to hear proposals and then, and then to go from there. And that might be, in his case, is a proposal to, um, to defer some uh, water and sewer for a period of time while he can renovate his building. Okay. Uh, and in your case, it might be something similar. It could be, you know, I'm trying, you know, usually it's got to be, you know, what you want to do with that piece of property and what time frame you're looking for. So well, if you said it's six on months the market or, now. Right. Um, Heritage um, Real Estate and Renda, Rose Wright is the agent, and uh, it's been on now for, but I'm having trouble with the eviction. Mm. I evicted him back in March, and I still haven't got him out there. He's stuff in there, and, and um, when he gets that out, she wants to go in the course and take pictures and show where the renovation's gonna be. Mm -hmm. So she might be able to tell me in, a, in an approximate way how much the uh, renovation's gonna be because maybe it won't be sell saleable until those renovations are done. Mm -hmm. Is that what the same thing that he's doing with this? Well, in, some, in, in a roundabout way, I mean, his, his He's not selling his, but he just bought it. And he's, yeah, looking, no. he's looking now to ask a period of time where he can be reprieved of, of the water and sewer uh, relief. relief so that he can do the renovations to his building so that then he can have tenants in there and then he'll start to pay his water and sewer. Because Dylan's the same thing where there is no, there is no vacancy for that building. So he's going to get charged whatever to have that yeah. unless he gets reprieved. And, and, you know, I would say the board's more than welcome. Yeah, we'll hear any proposal. I mean, I'm just, you know, and I would say probably the best thing to do in your circumstance, Joyce, would be one is maybe to sit down with Therese or Greg and just maybe just go over a little bit of the history of your bill because I don't want to do it in open session because that's your, your privacy. Go through the history of your bill and where it is based on where it was type thing so that you understand why it is where it is and then they could they could help you out with you know how how to write a proposal to the board um type or or by talking with them what what are you trying to do with the building and they they could probably help you out a little bit on that well i i, I have a slight feeling that there's going to have to be some reservation before the building will sell on the other hand uh, I, I am negotiable. If the, my price is too high and they'll do the renovation, renovations, then I would come down to my price. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not, not foolish now. I know that, you know, right. it's, it's uh, when I um, priced my homeowners, they told me my house in Vermont, I mean, in the North Bay, would be 850000 to replace if anything happened to it. Mm. And I said, good Lord, where'd that come from? Well, they said one in a $150 a square foot now is the estimate that contractors <laughs> put on. So based on that, the renovation that I would expect they'd have to do I, I could probably put a price on, and that way it would be part of the proposal. How well, would I that mean, do? I mean, usually what in your case is is figure out what exactly you want to do with your building, and how how long that's going to take, and then ask then ask the board for a reprieve for that time frame for your water and sewer bill. That that would be you know in a roundabout what the proposal would. How would you ever decide how long it was going to be? Well, that's, I mean, because to do a proposal or to take a proposal, you need, you know, a, a beginning and an end date. I mean, it can't just, you know, retrieve your water and sewer for, you know, the next five years because you don't yeah, know you how could, long it might take to sell. You could even say maybe in the six month period, the next six month period, in the next, Re and, yeah. then, and then revisit it. You know, at the end of the six-month period. So, yeah. That's kind of how I say it. Just 
I mean, the only way we can do anything as water commissioners is to hear your proposal, um, which, yeah. you know, a proposal to me is, you know, what is it that you want to do with that property and how long right. is it going to take you? I don't have any uh, trouble drawing up for a proposal, and but whether it would be uh, like a, for a contract to look at and say, oh, yes, she, she did a nice proposal, but it isn't right. Because I'm not a contractor, but I'm not sure I could draw a proposal. Yeah, and I, I think what he means oh, is yeah. not necessarily a cost, just just how long. So, yeah. like what Dylan said was for the next year, I'm going to be in this building. It's empty. There's no water to it for the next year. Can right. you abate or forgive my water and sewer bill until you know within a year for a year? And then after a year, if it has if nothing's been done or it, it's there's still no need for water and sewer, we will revisit what we're going to do. So that he's asked for basically one year of relief from Maybe water. You got a name, huh? Yeah, uh, it's considered an abatement. I would, I guess, that's probably the right term. But forgiveness, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, um, but his is based on you know he's in there doing something. There's right. no water to it, and he's asking for whatever, hundred percent, fifty percent, whatever you want to ask for. Yeah, that's what they're talking about a little more. It's just mm -hmm. okay. here's what the building and yours could be something like I'm trying to sell the building. Yeah, uh, there's no water being used. It's on the market. It, I'm hoping to sell it within a year or six months, whatever. And then you kind of ask for it that way. And just tell them what you want. I want a year of paying 50% of my water and sewer. I want a year of paying zero or whatever you want to do. Okay. And you, I could definitely help you with that. If you that want would to be nice. And then yeah. you just bring it to us, Joyce, and then as a group, we'll talk about it in open session just like this. We'll talk about your proposal, and then and then we will you know, discuss it and vote on you know either that proposal or something that's very similar or, you know, and I was thinking that you could get the advice of, of the real estate agent. She, you know, she knows as soon as the sky's out, she can tell more yeah. what the property is. I think you could write it to say you could write to say one year or yeah. when it sells, and so the new owners will just start paying their regular bill. We can we can work. That's pretty easy to do. Okay. It's just a matter of figuring out how long you want to do it and how much of your water and sewer do you want to have forgiven. Yeah. And we, and we want to, I mean, that, that's the whole you know, point of the process of bringing the proposals. We want to work with um, you know, revitalizing the downtown and whatever means that is. And, and uh, building owners in the downtown, or I mean anywhere really, I mean, you can come to the board at any time with a proposal for, um, for those types of things. Because um, we want to see, we, you know, we want to see you know, Dylan's building to get up and running and have, you know, four people renting from him because that, you know, that is good. That's good for everybody. Well, I do. Oh. And, or, or you, you renovating or selling your business and having that, you know, we, we want more of that. Um, you know, there's some cases we've had some uh, owners in town um, get, you know, small loans from us, you know, no. for a short period of time to do work yeah. on it. So we're open to proposals, there's no doubt. The only thing we can't do is we can't arbitrarily, you know, you know say, Joyce, geez, I'd, no. I'd like to cut yours in half tonight because we can't do that. You um, gotta have some backup paper. You gotta have some, some sort of proposal that. Some person. Yeah. And, and Greg and, and Teresa are very good at sitting down listening to you and, and maybe based on what you wanna do it, like Greg was saying, they can help you uh, put something together that won't take very long. Well, that would be wonderful. Sure. And then maybe I would do maybe that. by the next board meeting, if you have it all together, then okay. we can we'll have an appointment for you to come in and, and do it that way. Okay. This is this is Dylan's, and it's only you know it's five six sentences and it's plenty. All that everything he's looking for is asking for is right there. So it's all a right. simple just what do you want? And we'll, we'll present it to the board. Single piece of paper. Single piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just keep it simple. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, that, uh, that's much better. I didn't, didn't know it was going to end up like that. Okay. Yeah, so just, just come in one of these days. Come on into the office and I'll help you out. Okay, it's pretty, it's pretty that's pretty wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Okay. I don't have too much spare time, you know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> go. I'm, I'm a busy lady. <laughs> Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for thank you for helping me. I'm glad we wound up this way. And I'm anxious to get it on the way. So, this is 
my town after all. <laughs> well, thank you and have a good evening. What are you saying? Huh? Are you saying? No, I don't need to say. <laughs> nice to see all you people. <laughs> have a good night. Have a good evening. Hope I didn't bore everybody. Further discussion from the board in regards to the appointment? No, I got uh, the new talk and the stuff to talk about Jones. Uh, okay. Is right. It is 6 30, so um, next up, uh, Dylan to talk about 30 Densmore Drive. Um, Dylan was here last time um, and uh, has spent a little time with Greg and Teresa on. Kind of putting a proposal together. Did everybody have the the letter that was in the packet? I had mine. Let me just find it. What to do with it? Let's see. Here it is. All right. So currently, um, if I just wanted to make sure I got it right. So currently, what? Um, so Dylan's looking at at um, doing renovations to his property. Um, right now, he's he's asking for uh, to abate his last water and sewer bill, which I'm assuming what you're saying there is the one that was due today. The last, yeah, that's right. Right. So that one, as well as there would be one more quarter bill, because um, you got uh, July uh, uh, January first, two thousand nineteen. So you'd be looking at the one that was due today, as well as yeah. this last quarter yeah. bill that we have coming. That should be enough for you to, you know, at least do that period of time until, if it's not enough, I'll come back and do it again, you know. Um, and I would think that, I know we had talked about it, if, um, you know, during that time we would shut the water off right to the building. If we can find it, yeah. Have they found it yet? No. 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 <laughs> if we can find it, we'll shut it off, yeah. <laughs> so we will, we will shut the water off for that that time, and then, um, and then we would probably have a follow-up meeting like in maybe late December so, yeah, to, to so see how you're coming on it. And, yep. Is there anything else I'm missing on that, Dylan? Or? Yeah, as far as that, yeah, that's about it. Did everybody on the board have an opportunity to read through it? And yeah, I'm uh, playing devil's advocate. <laughs> um, I, you know, I've considered Dylan's letter, and I, the other point that came up that I was thinking about was we, you know, we set a policy that. The commercial accounts can't take advantage of the vacancy rate uh, arrangement that a residential person could. But maybe we could consider an addendum which allows, and I'm, the wording may not be correct, but, but a situation like Dylan's or a situation like Joyce's where we know that the building is empty and nothing is going on with it, there's no water being that we can look at having a building in that kind of situation and be able to take advantage of the vacancy rate, which is considerably less than what they would be paying, but still gets us back to where we're not losing, we're getting our basic costs recovered. Yeah, but only in a situation where we know that the building, and it wouldn't be a multi-apartment type building, yeah. because you can't isolate you know, two, two apartments that aren't and two that are. But in a case where you have a building that we know is totally un unoccupied and nothing going on, shut off the water, go through that process like it was a vacancy rate residential, and then have the owners pay the vacancy rate you know, arrangement, which is less, it's not, a, you know, it's probably a third, it's at least a third or more or less than it 
it's, it's about, I don't know, it's based on the EU, right? So I'm, I'm not sure it's exactly. It's based on the fixed cost of the system. Right, uh, so which were on the residential, for water and sewer, on the vacancy rate, it's about $200 for both yeah. of those for a yeah, I want to think. I want to say it's based on one EU. Based, based on, on one EU. EU. Yeah. This is a it's roughly eighty percent. Yeah. yeah, roughly eighty yeah. percent of what the the regular cost would be. That's what the fixed cost, is. that's what the vacancy right. rate is. Right, right. right. Well, I'm th I'm, I had to deal with the residential one. Right. This past so you're saying if the entire building is empty and we shut the water off. Right. It's a vacancy. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like now, if I could, you know, <coughs> that, yeah. I'll be zero. Well, I mean, the, the, you know, one thing that we have right now is the kind of the shock and awe of what, what vacancy rate was, well, I'll back up, what people were paying for vacancy rate prior, which wasn't following the policy. So, so there's that shock and awe of paying what should have been paid all along, um, as well as we did in, you know, now we want to make sure that there's 80% of the system being, being paid for. Uh, I mean, my opinion on on it is like, <clears throat> I, you know, I do see Paul's point of view where, you know, if you know a building is completely vacant, to put them on vacancy and have them pay the 80% of the fee, you know, it's probably pretty fair to go. Um, <clears throat> I, with this, with, you know, I guess in some ways with the By taking the vacancy rate out, one thing that has been good so far is it brings people to the table to talk about the piece of property. You know, um, what do you want to do with it? And you know, how can we help you? Um, and I think a lot of the talk that you know, at least, at least personally, is I like to see people come to the board and talk about their piece of property and <coughs> what they want to do with it, so that we can use that towards the revitalization of the downtown or other parts of town. Um, where maybe if people are just on vacancy rate, right? well, the building's just vacant as normal and, you know, there's really no plan in effect for the near future, you know. Um, I, I think in some ways it's, you know, it's kind of a, you know, some people are angry with the, the amount of money that they're paying for a certain commercial space right now for water and sewer. However, it's also a good opportunity to have that talk with us about property that what they want to do with. Um, because, for instance, in Dylan's case, <coughs> if, if Dylan's is vacant, let's say, um, vacant and he's paying 80% of the current rates, then he's 80% of the current rates, you know, he might not think about, geez, I could come in and maybe get all of it taken care of for a period of time, or 50%, yeah, you know. Just think it is a place to start that's, you know, it's fair and equitable. But you're talking the whole building would have to be vacant. Yeah, right. The situation like Dylan's, he's renovating and there's nothing going on, or Joyce's where the building is empty and, and she's you know, got it on the market. Or the water's been shut off because there's absolutely no activity at all. Right, right. right. Yeah. Because the, some of the areas that we ran into that was when we were going through it was you get that you know, building that has you know, one tenant in it and, and four and vacant things. apartments. And yeah, but in the past, they were on vacancy, right. you know, right. where they're technically not vacant, you but, know. You know, that wouldn't apply to anything like that, any kind of building like that. It would be up to the discretion of the war commission. Right. Well, in a lot of ways, this proposal, Paul, is kind of like the most fair fair to both parties, right? The town is still covering its fixed cost. Mm -hmm. It's a known cost, which is actually, my understanding is it's broken up of those hookups and what it takes to even just exist, just to be there. Right. And so in the case where Dylan is asking us to abate it, it's actually, it's a bigger blow to the town and to the water and sewer department than if he's paying a vacancy rate on a building that's not drawing anything. You know, it's, it's like Greg said last week or two weeks ago, it's the, the pay to play, you know, that, that, that fixed 
this cost is what it takes the town just to have and maintain that hookup. And at some point in time, Bill and Gary will be on the line and will use that. And so this is sort of the way that the town can cover that cost without it being becoming a bigger burden to all the other users in the meantime. You know, so it, to me it feels like this this idea is more fair to both parties. I had, a, I had another idea. <laughs> uh, what, what if you were to, um, and this, if this is off the wall, you won't be afraid to tell me, but what if you were to give them, uh, like in Joyce's, it, is it a little different? She's going to sell the building. What if you give her some relief, we give her some relief, with X percentage of that to be paid back when the building is sold? Which would, which would take care of the cost that you're talking about. And like while, she's, while she is trying to live here, she's not paying that, whatever that number is, every quarter. But when she sells the building for whatever, she needs a certain percentage of that money that would need to come back to the town. When Dylan starts renting, he needs to pay what he, was pay, what he, what he is paying for full cost plus a little bit until he pays back a certain percentage. I think that's how we might have. I mean, well, I don't know. Yeah, the manager. That's yeah, I think the manager that would be, because it's an interesting idea of tracking it and tracking it accurately. It'd be interesting to hear. We, well, we have agreements with a lot of people in town. Um, yeah. Since, we, you know, with the water bill and all that, the, the people that were behind, we've got, we've got these agreements all over. So that could work. I don't want to speak for Teresa, she'd probably kick me in the butt for telling her that. But <laughs> it's, I'd be curious to hear her. Yeah, I mean, but again, like I said, we've got a lot of people in town that we've got agreements with, and it's the same scenario that we pay a little bit of the month on top of what we're paying for our regular bill. We pay a little extra. So, I mean, it's the concept is, I think it's, it's feasible. Um, I don't know how other people really are to do it now. You're just deferring, basically, the, the payment. Right, but now Dylan needs his money to put into the bill. Right. Right. The building's up and running. Hopefully, he will get enough money so that he could. Sure, but the, the repayment is then kind of is phased instead of it being all at the beginning. We can make anything. Work. And I think when we came to the vacancy rate, and, and you know, I, I think Paul has a great point there. With you know, if the building is a hundred percent vacant, where you can go up and turn it off, and nobody's getting any water out of it, probably makes sense to have vacancy rate. I, I think the reason why we had such a big knee-jerk reaction to the commercial properties is there were so many commercial properties in the town that had situations where they have a building that serves for establishments in, in the building, only one was being used, and they were all on vacancy, you know? So it was kind of an abuse of the, the power of the town at the time. Um, not to mention, you can't put, you know, you can't we don't have any way of vacancying three of the four apartments. So so we just kind of said, okay, nobody gets vacancy rate. But, you know, Paul that definitely makes a good point that maybe we can look into of modifying if you have a building that is completely um, shut down, you know, a vacancy rate. Again, we're talking 80%. This isn't the $25 that people were paying before. Now it's... 90, you know, so it, it's considerably more than you were paying on a vacancy rate before. Mm -hmm. right. well, but uh, but as so. Paul well, said before, it would, it would go down to the equivalent of one for you, right? It wouldn't be a vacancy rate based on. Well, I mean, well, Dylan's building, for example. Well, the vacancy rate is based on the EU calculation. Right. right. Yeah. So, so, so if you have three EUs in your building, you'd pay 80% of what you're, 80% of your normal bill, roughly. Yeah, I mean, 
it's so instead one, of, one. so if you had I'm three, one, uh, one, one, right? If you had a building and it had three EUs, let's say, then you would pay a vacancy rate on three EUs. Eighty percent of three EUs. Okay. Everything's based off of that EU calculation. Right. Right. Yeah. But in Dylan's case, it's a one EU. In Joyce's case, three. Well, it was three. One one plus, plus, right. plus three. Because the whole equation is based off this concept of the users. That's where we come up with the EU calculation. Right. So as far as like, you know, I guess it's still so now, you know, apparently the cost to everybody is higher than, you know, the elderly choices, you know. And, you know, even me at working seven days a week, I think it's, I think it's astronomical to have water, you know. And as Greg was talking about there, he said, you know, you can think of a better idea than you bring it to me. I'll, so, I was thinking, why don't you guys go off your zone? As far as take everything, put it in taxes, go off your zone. Your purple zone is pretty much everybody in the water area. If you took that to your purple zone and did 50% of the water bill to the purple zone, higher taxes, and then spread it out to the rest of the town. I mean, I think we've got it. I mean, yes, the rest of the town doesn't use the water. You know, the guy in Camper doesn't use the water. But in a roundabout way, if you don't have a good town, you don't have a town battle. You know, in the town of shit, excuse my language, <laughs> you don't have, a, you know, and no offense, but my, my brother's wife's grandmother, she's a single person up on North Main Street. She pays the same as I do for this apartment, you know. And she's on a fixed income. And me working seven days a week, you know, has a hard time paying that. And I can only imagine how she feels, you know. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> and just relief for everybody, you know. As far as, and I hate to be that guy that you know says send it out, but if you put it, you know, put a higher burden on us as far as taxes. You know, if you put it all in one <coughs> bill, it wouldn't be as, oh, look at this bill. You know, it would be in your taxes. And again, you know, send it out percentage-wise. Because as we were looking on map, your purple zone is pretty much everybody else town water. You know, and then if you, if you went off your purple zone and send it out from there, so 50% purple zone, your taxes, you get 50% of the water bill, Put in your taxes and then spread the rest of it out. Because you guys gotta update your water system anyway. And if you, you can't put that on us too. You know, I mean you're gonna have to go out to the taxes eventually. So I mean, why not just kick so, it in the So that's a concept of, of communal property where everybody in town pays for the 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 use of it's like a like everybody. a sidewalk or a road. If you pay your taxes, you're not paying for that. 60 feet of road in front of your house. You're paying for part of the road system. And this is kind of the same concept. In a, in a roundabout way, everybody in town uses water, whether it's to get a pizza at the pizza place or use the bathroom at Babes or whatever. You're, in a roundabout way, you're using the water. Maybe. But there's some people that have five or six people in town. I pay, yeah. I have one. Yep. Yeah. And I just want to check them up. Right. And I'm paying as much as that. What's fair about that? Right. And that's the problem with the EU system that I saw. And I was talking very about it. So, you know, if I had one person in my house, and I'm the only one taking a shower, and John down the road's got five kids, and they're showering and bathing and swimming in the tub, right. it's not, well, you know. Hang tight for a little bit. There's a nice big spreadsheet right here that talks about it. Yeah. And it shows the actual calculations based on the But it's still ridiculous. It, yeah, it's so ridiculous. I think that, what again, happened, that's where. What happened to when you used to go around and find out how many people lived in a home and and you went by that. Uh, yeah. Now um, people think, oh, we can't do that. That's too much. We can't have anybody doing it. You don't want anybody going around with meters either. I offered to buy the meter and pay for having to put the on me, my The meters won't stuff. work, though. The problem with meters is going down there. You, that's a $500, cost to you, you can't afford the meters. Instantly, to the $500,000, like that just makes our water bill go up even more. Right. You know, and how come people mm -hmm. have cut water bills? I know them in different towns. I cut them just the opposite. Once they get the water meter, their water bills went down. Yeah. I don't know if you take. What I know is that whenever you have.
have a water meter, and every other town I've ever been in that has water meters, everybody pays a what's called a base rate. And the base rate is typically all the fixed costs because that's the cost that we incur regardless of how much water you actually drink or bathe in, whatever. And then they charge you with your meters. They charge you for your consumption on top of that. So everybody pays the same base rate, uh, which is 80% of whatever it is, plus your consumption on top. So it may be, I don't know how their calculations work or if that's how they do it, but that's the way everywhere I've ever worked it's been. Because you, you still have to, unfortunately, you still have to cover all of your fixed costs because that's the cost to produce the water no matter what. And then you pay, the consumer pays for the consumption that goes through the meter. You know what I can understand? Is why did every other town handle the sewer and water better than Bethel does? It seems I wonder, I wonder. every other town, I mean, I talk to people from Lebanon or Woodstock or whatever, and I tell them what I pay. I pay for four people, which is, um, 2.7, I think you have me as now, $791.57 a quarter. And that's for four people. And my mother's 96 and doesn't you know, wash her hair every day like a teenager. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is ridiculous. Why can Randolph and Woodstock and Lebanon and all the other towns handle it and we can't? Randolph's is, just, Randolph's is much more expensive than ours. And you can't drink their water because it's got manganese in it. What? And they refuse to take it out. What? You can't drink their water because it's got manganese in it. Right? And they can't drink the water here. They can't drink it every day. Oh, good. That's probably it. Well, we better well, well, take away the well, well, let's. Give, so, give us people that are older and trying to live here and want to stay here in here and need our water. Just give us a break. So, maybe that, well, don't. <laughs> I'm not the guy making the rules here. Maybe, I, we have to pay the I mean, bills. Maybe, so. maybe just run the numbers on it. So yeah, I mean, this communal concept is so, something we talked about. That yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. So the first part of it right now, there's been years and years of neglect on multiple levels of things. Right? I know. And, we and we're, and we're, and we're, and we're working on different options for the town. Um, we're going to talk about one of our options tonight. We've talked about other options. <laughs> right now, we have to make sure that we're paying the cost. Because if not, we're going to continue to incur debt. And it doesn't make any sense to incur debt. So right now, we are, we are paying our fair share. And based on a non, it's based on a non-biased system. It doesn't matter. The system is based upon your residence and not how old or how young, or if you're female, or if you're male, or if you make a million dollars a year, if you make two dollars a year. It is a non-biased system. But it's not a fair system. It's, no. it, but it's not up to the individual person. It's based on the property. So that at, at that point, the property is the responsible responsibility of the owner of the property. Now yeah. they say to yeah. me, well, you can get so, help with things, but when I get help with other things, where yeah. does the money go? So let's just make sure we stay on topic here with Dylan's. We do have a, we are going to talk about some different EU um, calculation possibilities in the packet that Greg has. Um, but let's finish up with Dylan so well, we can get home and have dinner. I think that's a very good idea. I think they should. Yeah, really I mean, even if you took 60% and put it in the purple, you know, and that would be, you know, that's everybody's paying the water. Instead of for my chef Well, that's the thing. Is you gonna look at it the other way? Well, right? that is debt. That's that's because it's that's not very true. true. But and the other stand sense of that, you know, when you put in Gal Cloud or had the other guy, that wasn't a that wasn't a water people's decision to do that. That was the town. That was everybody in the town made that decision to put Dell in. No offense, I'm not, I'm not trying to throw anybody in the bus, but past people doing that in the town. I'm new to this place, and I don't want to make enemies, but <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it, that's for sure. So let's, so and let's, I understand, I've talked to Robert Bradshaw about the same thing. He said, well, when my ball goes down, but if you run the numbers, are you really going to be that upset when it's $40 more on your taxes a quarter to help out with the town? 
mora tak se kam jo povedal za pravi zadatak and 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 her too i mean i she she over 300 dollars i mean this is this is helping everybody this isn't thinking about i'm not just thinking about me here i'm thinking about you know everybody you know, you know what what bothers me a lot poor barbara she pays one year you know and on a great system that the town runs under bethel mills pays one and a half now, yeah. they wash their trucks, they wash the thing, they, they've got people stopping in, they have employees. That, that to me, honest to God, makes no sense. So you ought to go down and talk to them and tell them the page. I sure. would go down in yeah. a heartbeat. It's, it's <laughs> the view in front of me. So let's, we're focusing on with Dylan, and then we'll get to our next item. So we've all gone over Dylan's proposal. Uh, just again, what Dylan's looking for is, um, some retrieve on his water and sewer at the uh, 30 Densmore Drive um, for the quarter that is due currently, as well as, do we call that fourth quarter? Fourth quarter payment? Second quarter. Second quarter, okay, sorry, second quarter. Um, so just doing quick math, looks, it'd be $584.16 for, for those six months. Um, and then it would be revisited in January 1st of 2019. That's the proposal that's on the table. Um, any any further comments or uh, any amendments to the proposal? Or if not, I I would you know have the five of us vote on the proposal at hand. If I can get that. Well, I'm I'm kind of hesitant about completely. Creating an entire amount. Um, I mean, it's not. It's, it's not really the amount. It's the concept that I think um, you know, we may be treading on, you know, possible problems on the road. I'd like to, you know, I'll I'll go ahead with this, but I would also like to look at the other options so we can establish a policy that we can apply all the time. For when these situations come up, not necessarily a case by case. And when you get into exceptions, when we talk about this, then you sometimes get into a slippery slope. So I would, you know, I'd go ahead with this. I don't like the concept of completely evading it, but I think we need to look at something, coming up with something that's going to work better. And we're going to have a between now. to have some discussion, I mean, whether it's something like Dave's idea uh, or just going on to the, the vacancy rate, you know, just examine the different possibilities. I mean, $500 is going to break us. Right. But, I mean, even even if he was on the vacancy rate, he still, let me get my calculator, even if he was on the vacancy rate, he would still have the ability or option to pay mm -hmm. the vacancy. So is that all this is this file to change? It's uh, if I get it right, it's two ninety two oh eight was your bill. So he's looking for the two ninety two oh eight that's due now. Did you pay that or you had paid that? Okay. As well as the two ninety two oh eight that would be the second quarter bill that would get so us to the water answer. Water answer. Plus some water. <laughs> that helps. So um, So, so the agreement would be if, based on his proposal that he has forward with us, that would require us, we would go out and shut the water off. If we can find it. If we can find it. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. really a giant pipe clamp. Yeah, we'll plug in. <laughs> <laughs> Have a motion to move forward with the proposal or for the discussion? I would, I would agree with Paul. We want to revisit this before we talk again in January because if we're going to come back and have sort of the same, same type of proposal, um, you know, it's, it's not that big of a hit for two quarters, but you know, not knowing what your time frames are going to be if you don't, and yeah. we don't know what your time frames are going to be for renovation. So. And that's why I love I 
my opinion on the whole thing is I, I'm open to, you know, doing, you know, these zero abatement type deals on short term proposals. Um, you know, short term for me is like a year and under. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to attract landowners or potential new landowners to buy property inside the town and to do something with it rather than just keep it vacant and, you know. And just stick stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I, I would be for it. So we won't you make. We'll move. So I would second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Aye. So the was for the zero thing. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we'll uh, make an attempt to shut the water off. Of course, he doesn't have any fixtures to use any water, but. Off there, the, the hose is cut off in the basement. So you can check and see if you got the right one. <laughs> if you need it. And, and that, you know, that is still one of the, you know, underlying issues that we have, as well as trying to find curb stops on certain buildings or residents in this town that we still don't. I still don't know where they're at, but um, that is definitely something on there. So, um, so this, Greg, you'll take care of that with Therese? Yep. Yeah, um, and then we'll give it to him and see if And then we ought to put you, we had to, you had to be thinking the, um, whatever the last board meeting will be of December, probably to come back and revisit. Yeah. Update us on yep. what you've done, how it's going, you know, hopefully it's done, you know. Kind of stuff. It's expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's even a little low renovation. It's crazy. Well, hopefully that can help you out, Dylan. Yeah. Just get, um, yep. I have been thinking about um, the taxes issue and including some, uh, some of the items that you might include in raising taxes. We're all aware that if you're under certain income levels, the state kicks in and gives uh, considerations to people with lower incomes. The money comes in from the state. So the town does not lose money. Okay. So there are, are there are ways in which we can look at to be economically sound. Things that we do in the town for, for beautification. Um, if we're really concerned of how to use our dollars, then we need to look at what we do with the money in the town. So um, the only way that I can pay my bills is because I said no to myself many times so that I made choices of how to spend my money wisely. And I've seen some things in the town that I think are not wise. So um, I think we ought to think about that kind of thing. Well, we're we starting the budget process probably next board meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So we're getting ready to start the new budget process. So. Is our oil water lifted? Mm -hmm. It is? Yes. Okay, because I didn't know that. And I have to tell you. Well, it said it would have been, it said it was lifted in, said, what, 48 hours? Hmm? It said it would have been lifted in 48 hours by Wednesday, I believe, right? Is that what your letter said? I didn't know that. But uh, for almost two years now, I do not drink the water here. Because my gut tells me when things are not correct. And it's not pleasant. Well, I, I know I... I won't be graphic, but it, it's not pleasant. Well, I don't understand, you know, I mean, we need to stay on our agenda here, but... Um, you know, there's quite a bit, of, not quite a bit, there are certain comments in regards to the water in the town 
um, and not drinking it. Um, but I've seen all the test results, and I can tell you I drink a lot of water in a lot of different towns, and I can tell you the water in Bethel is better tasting than the majority of the other water I've ever tasted. I know, but I work in school, mm -hmm. and I see how many kids are on IEPs and who have problems, learning issues. And I say to myself, what contaminants are these kids having? And then we worry about the cost of educating each child. Well, keep lead pipes, and we'll have more IEPs, and we'll have more children that struggle. That's you know, that is, it's what I see. Well, we got to keep on with yes, the agenda. Um, that's all right. So we're good with Dylan. You'll follow up with um, Therese and Brian uh, and Greg, and they'll uh, make sure that those are taken care of for you. So. As far as running numbers on that, that's good. I mean, just run the numbers. That's probably for this next uh, a couple items down. But well, we're we're talking. You know, we we've talked about the meters. We'll we'll talk about meters again. We're talking about um, meters are. Uh, we're talking about the the thing is, you know, we're we're open to anything, and we're exploring all of them. Um, and we're going to talk about another potential one tonight. Um, you know, and then there are other proposals like the one like you had, Bill. So. Those are definitely things that we'll continue to talk about as a board. Well, as far as like, the, up, the update of the water system, I heard you know, four million dollar update. Uh, where did that go? I mean, is, is that going to be put on too? I don't know. I don't know where the number of <laughs> infrastructure probably will be. If you're going to send that out to the taxpayers, why not just jump it? I mean, well, we'll get, you know, again, we. We gotta stay on topic. Yep. That's cool. yeah. We can have well, fun. Whatever that one's up, let us know. We'd like to come to that. <laughs> sure will. Okay. All right. So um, we've moved through our appointments, and we are on to the utility relocation agreement for V Trans. Greg, right, take us through that quickly. Sure. So um, next spring, summerish, V uh, Trans will be doing a mill overlay of, of 107 from. Uh, sugar about, house down to the uh, from the sugar house down to the town yeah. office. Yeah, uh, in part of that, they have found out sort of. They found out that we have potentially 14 sewer manholes that will have to be raised or adjusted up or down, either way. And um, they're not sure how many yet because they they're just not sure. Um, what they're asking for us is if they want to find out whether we want to do it in house or if they want to have their, their people do it while we're on site. Um, it's impossible for us to do it in house. We don't have the great rings. We don't have the manpower. It just would be a tough thing to do. Uh, so they're asking that we sign this contract, which basically says that um, we will have them adjust any of these manholes that need to be adjusted, up or down, provide all the materials and labor and everything, uh, at a thousand dollars a piece. They said there may be zero. There may be fourteen. They just they don't know. Uh, the maximum amount out of pocket would be fourteen thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars, which we would. Uh, would be the next budget, so we would have to just budget that for next year because this project will happen probably early, late spring, early summer. So by the time we get the bill and everything, it'll be into the next fiscal year. Uh, but it's something we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to budget for out of the sewer, out of the sewer uh, budget. Uh, again, we don't know. They couldn't provide me with any actual grade elevations for any of these rings, so we're not sure. They just said once we start milling at two inches, we're not really sure where you're going to be at. So. So these this are, is worst case scenario. These are the covers that are from the Bethel line to? Uh, as far as it goes. Yeah, it goes from, so from where they stop down here, which I don't know if they're like the fish, somewhere in there, all the way out as far as the sewer system goes. So we try the seat place, I think. Just as you yeah, know. exactly. It's, it's all the manholes on our system, yeah. on 107 right here. Um, but, well, the road line is at some point. But that's still our, still our infrastructure. It's, it's our infrastructure. Yeah. That's what it's been. It's still our infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, and again, they don't know if it's 0, 1, 2, 14. They don't know yet. But worst case, that's what we're looking at is 14,375. Um, that includes 14 manholes and like two or three 
um, water curb stops, little canes. So the 14,375 would be the maximum amount of the maximum amount. Of that. That's four, there should be in if here. If the bids come in less than that for these items, then we would pay the lesser amount? Right, right. That, that's worst case, exactly. So the last page, uh, page five, outlines yeah, sort of the cost estimate. This is the engineer's cost estimate. They haven't gone out to bid for this yet, so it could be a little less. It could be a little more, but this, they're saying this is the max. Uh, my guess is that, honestly, there won't be enough manholes. There won't be 14 manholes that need to be adjusted because um, they're just doing a mill and overlay. So unless these manholes are already really bad, I, I really don't see that they're going to be adjusted very many. Um, and we can, we can make allowances to hold those things down another eighth of an inch if we have to to I mean, save us $1,000. When we did the, well, you weren't here, but when we did the Main Street, Church Street, remember, out to the school, they didn't adjust any of those. I don't think they adjusted a single one. Are they all alone? It was a mill and pave yeah. job. They shouldn't have to. I mean, the road is not, like, it's not in horrible shape. Okay. Do we have to do anything? Or uh, yeah, I need a signature, signature on it. Uh, actually, I just need you to authorize me. To sign it. So move. Second. All in favor? Thank you. All right. And municipal planning grant. Yep. So this is, uh, we're revisiting this. I brought this to you earlier and I missed some signatures that were required. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the planning grant that we are applying for for fiscal year 19. It's to um, Re, not redo, but update the town plan. Uh, this is the project that the, the planning department, the, the planning commission, commission yeah. has been working on. Um, so I just need to actually get, uh, let's do another approval of this if you'd like, and then I'll have you sign okay. uh, on the second page here. All right. <coughs> so moved. Second All in favor? Aye. So next up, we have this big, huge spreadsheet of just data. Um, so I was asked to go through at a, at a previous meeting a couple weeks ago to go through um, the state, uh, the state's newest rendition of the EU table and how they, they think we should be calculating everything. Um, and what this table shows, unfortunately, it's not in color. I apologize. His might be, but um, if you look on here, you basically have every address that we have in town that receives a, a water bill. This is water only, but the numbers are the same for sewer. The EU calculation is the same for sewer. So, uh, so these are all the water accounts, and what it shows on here is the, uh, so the first, well, you've got the map number, the address, and then the, the WFEU. So that's the EU that we are currently charging this property. Uh, and then you have the actual EU, which is the calculated uh, what they had calculated with the old table as an EU, as the actual EU. And you'll see that on a lot of them you have um, like low numbers, like 0.51. Well, our, our, our policy has been that if you're, that it's a minimum of a one EU. So if you're below a one EU on your calculation, you still get charged for one EU. Minimum of one. Less than one, yes, yes. Once you achieve that one threshold, then it's a portion of their own. So if you're at 1.5, then we, we charge you on a 1.5, not a 2. Uh, so if you go through here, it tells you what the actual EU is off of the old, the old methodology. Uh, the calculation, the current calculation that they used, a lot of these say none because they basically said that a single family is a 1. So you'll see that it says there were no calculations done. Thank you. Um, next slide is kind of a, a simple description of the property, uh, what it is real quickly. Um, the next line is the new calculation or the new EU itself that's based off the new table and next to that the last line there is the actual calculation as to how I got to that. Now the history of this is is this system being used in other towns currently? I do not know. I'd have to check. This is the system that so 
the way they have done the EU, the EU concept comes from the water supply rule, which is the state of Vermont's kind of Bible for the water systems in the state. And what the town adopted was this concept of this table that was in there was EU calculation uh, in this water supply rule. Um, and that's what we went with. And they've kind of used a, I will tell you, they've kind of used a, a molding of the old and the new kind of a, a little bit throughout the old calculation. Uh, the new calculation is based strictly to the letter of the law on the new EU table, the new calculations. Um, I don't know if other towns do it. I know that when we, we had a, uh, a legal case and basically the, the judge came back and said that for towns without meters, this, the way we're doing it is acceptable and um, I don't know what the other term was he used, but it's, it's okay. You basically said that it's, if it's what we have and it's what the state recommends that we use, then it's, it's as equitable as it can be. And it's, and it's as good as we can do. So I would assume have. right now, you know, right now we get the cost of the system, whatever that is, right? Right. And you divide it by the EUs, and exactly. that's what your rate is. Exactly. So it seems like now you're going to have more EUs. You are. So you're going to have that. So where one EU right now might be $116, once you do this whole calculation right. with all these, because there's going to be more EUs, now, right. now an EU might be $50. You're gaining 200, and, with right. the new calculation, you're gaining 278.4 EUs. So that is roughly what percentage? Thirty percent. So roughly a, an increase, I would say, about thirty percent. I'm kind of clear here, but so you're right. So there's kind of a, a there's a bit of an offset because you've got more EU, so you've got more people. Right. More than we have a pie, and you've got more people taking pieces of that pie. Now. But well, look through the data. So the data was is simply for you to look at. Uh, it's not completely complete because you've got a few question marks here on some properties that I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. So I've taken that value out, and it doesn't have anything to do with, with the line at all. But and it looks like what, early on that some of the p potential benefits of going with this EU calculations would be the instance if you if you're a single person in a two bedroom place versus a Versus a family in a four bedroom place. <coughs> right. The four bedroom would get charged more EUs than the. Right. So, what the biggest so that would be is, fair. What that the way. biggest change was was for the single family home. Mm -hmm. So, we went from everybody gets a one. I don't care if it's a five bedroom house or a one bedroom house. Everybody gets a one. Right. Now, the new calculation says that it's 150 gallons per bedroom. Mm -hmm. and, one, and so, you, you take that number, and I don't know if you can see what I did here, but. Yeah. Like the first one's a three bedroom. So it's 150 times three. Mm -hmm. And one EU equates to 210 gallons. Mm -hmm. So you do that division and it says, okay, well, that three, fam that three bedroom house is now an EU of 2.14. Right. So it more than doubled the EU calculation. Mm -hmm. your, to your point, that the, the EU went down. Right. The actual amount that each, the value of each EU, is that the cost of each EU, mm -hmm. went down. But it, it doubled how many EUs you had, more than double. Um, but in theory here, if, you know, like, like for instance, I'll use mine as an example. Mine's, whatever, the sixth one down. So if that's three bedroom, currently I'm, I'm being charged one EU. Mm -hmm. uh, but this would go to a 2.14. So right. in this case, I would pay not per EU more, but I would pay overall a little bit more. Right. However, somebody that has a two-bedroom house would pay probably a little less, right? It would be... Yes. So a two-bedroom so, house I mean, is a, a 1.43. I mean, it's not going to solve, it's not going to solve the issue if I have, <coughs> if I'm a single person with no kids and nobody, but I have a five-bedroom right. house, right. I'm still paying five right. bedrooms. But, but so you're going to actually pay more. Well, like a retired right. you know, person that's right. living in the house that they grew up in and it's, happens to be a house that's got but this is yeah. all based on the potential of yeah, the house. The two bedroom and the one bedrooms are probably going to either save money or be real close. The two bedrooms probably, the one bedroom will actually save money yeah, the, from yeah. currently. The two bedroom will be either saving or be real close to the status quo. Right. And then once you get beyond that, and this assumes and has to assume full occupancy because you can't, I mean, the days are going to be the house and asking how many people live here. Yeah. 
I just don't know if that's feasible or not. Yes, the potential of the building change. How many yes. bedrooms? Yes. If they're occupied or not. Uh, yes. So that's the biggest change would be um, the single families. Uh, the other part, so we have multifamilies, and the way it used to be again was it was uh, a one per unit. So it didn't matter if that was a three bedroom unit or a one bedroom unit. It didn't matter. It was just a it was just a one. So if you go to the second page and look at um, oh, what's a good example? Yeah, let's keep going. Maybe not the second page. Let's go to the third page, and you'll see the six, or even the top one on, the, on that page, the three. That's three apartment units on 70 North Main Street. Mm -hmm. So they were getting a three before. Yep. Because it was three units there. We don't care how many bedrooms were, were, were in each unit, which were probably all one bedrooms. But uh, what I did is I went to the Lister's card, and I looked at the property and found how many bedrooms were, in the, were actually in the house. And that's what we based this on. Was the same thing as a single family home. It's 150 gallons per bedroom, which gives you the 2.14. So it actually saves the multifamilies. It could save the multifamily users some money because uh, they, they went they went from a three to a 2.14. Uh, same with the two bedrooms. Uh, I mean, honestly, for the the multifamily units, it saves everybody. It does because they were getting charged per unit, and that's. You know, some, the six bedroom was a six, and they're at 4.3 now, so it's a significant difference for them. But who actually, I think who actually would pick up the difference is gonna be, well, you just have more users. And then the people in the bigger houses, the five, the four and the five bedroom houses, even the three bedroom houses possibly, are gonna pay a little more. I think what would be interesting is to, I don't know how much work would go and would be involved in doing it, but. It'd be interesting if you could take a couple of examples of a three, four, five, six bedroom, you know, the different options, I guess, there is, and see what, you know, like if a two bedroom house today is paying one EU, this is how much it is, right? And based on this calculation, a two bedroom might be, I'm just making up, might be 1.43 or something. Um, and see what that, Cost. What's an actual build? Look what, like? what would the cost difference look like? Look so, like? so if if I'm uh, if I'm being built one now, but now I have a six bedroom house, right? How how much more expensive would that be for me? Right. Or well, or the other way around, sure. if I have a one bedroom place, how much less would that be? And it, just to kind of see what the range sure. of some of the. Well, we can run those numbers. I, I, you know, I can't find my character. And maybe even a few examples of some of the multi-family places as well. You know, the average one right now is this. If we went to this system, it could be that. You know, just to kind of see right. what some rules. Right, yeah, we can, I can do that if you want with the, because we'll have to change, so we'll change the value of an EU based on the new um, total of EUs. Yeah. And then take that by the, the current EU rate, or the current EU, whatever that may be, and that tells you which bill is. If I had to guess, Probably one EU right now is probably pretty close to a three bedroom house now. Mm, seven, eight, seven. So 65%. If I go into 65% of 787, so we are increasing by. I'll have to run the numbers. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, nothing we're going to do, do tonight, but it's good information. Well, I can add another yeah. column to this, um, or it's already kind of dizzy, but uh, I can do that. I'll add another column to this and, and see if I can't put it on the bottom what the what a uh, a revised bill would look like yeah. for water. Uh, I've been doing it solely on water because sewer, like I said, is the, it's the same number mm -hmm. essentially. But I can show you water and sewer what each person would be paying based on this this new calculation. That'd be pretty I simple mean, to do. It's such a tough, you know, when you're talking about this. It, there are so many different. Well, There's so many different examples, you know. There, there are the people that have, that live by themselves that have five bedrooms, you know, that nobody's in. Or there are people that have, you know, they're getting paid one EU right now. And then there are people that have five bedrooms that are full that are paying one EU, right. you know. Um, well, it, you know, you figure it's more than a 50% increase in EU. 
species because we had 508 before. Mm -hmm. And now we have 787. So we're, in theory, well, I got to run the numbers. I got to run the numbers. It's yeah. got to be like two and a half bedrooms yeah. or something like I gotta that. I got to run the numbers. I can do that. I'll bring that back at the next meeting. Greg, now that the new chart then, does that dictate how many gallons per room or how many gallons per employee? Yeah. So the new chart is, see, yeah, you can see the calculations there. Yeah, so the one amount on the end there, so if they were. So the 150 is basically, it, it reads in circles. It basically says that every bedroom is 75 gallons per day, but you have to assume two people. So why don't they just say 150? Whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, but the other things, yeah, like the factory. So we've got uh, like GW Plastics. Mm -hmm. They've got, a, there's a value for, and I put the kind of the, um, the title of what that category is at the beginning. So factory yeah. is 15 gallons per day and then it shows you the calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got assembly area, we've got restaurant, workers in office, things like that. So. Um, well, for example, you know, about the mills, you know, they're having, it's based on numbers of employees. They have so many gallons per employee. Per What's the address day. there? Which one? Should be Marshmallow, right? Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Okay, 40 Marshmallow. What page do you get? I don't, I need to page. Are there pages? On page three, about 55% of the way down. Oh, there, yeah, they're based on employees, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's a couple different ways you can go with it because it's, that one almost could be, I can actually, I could probably go about three different ways with this because we have other buildings in town, Wimley, for example, that have, 15 different uses of the building. So what we're doing is we, we have to add each use. What we try, it's a little tricky. What we're trying not to do is what we were doing before, where we had, for example, we had like a gas station and the pumps were given a value of like 500 gallons per day. Well, we all know that pumps don't use water. It's the secondary uses of that facility. People call the bathroom, they're getting gas, but they're using the bathroom. They're doing whatever they do. But what they were, what we were doing in the past was we were charging for the fuel pumps and uh, the employees and all these other things that were just kind of inherent in the business. So we've gotten away with that. We've got, we, we stopped doing that. But what we have in these other buildings where we have multiple uses, like we have a commercial downstairs and a residential, we have to charge for both of those uses because the, the use of the rest or the use of the uh, commercial space has absolutely nothing to do with the, the people living upstairs. It's all separate. So like Manley's building, we've got a bunch of different uses. We could probably honestly get away with the same thing, not get away, but probably use that same thought process for Bethel Mills, where they've got, it's really a, 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 a what do you call it, small, a small dry goods store is what it really is. But then it's got a bunch of office workers upstairs. Uh, I don't know if they have any production there. Do they do, they do any milling or anything of any kind of you know? Okay. So this calculation, and this is based off this, this last line. I kept it consistent with how we were charging it before. So we're using the same, uh, the same title and the same category as what we were doing before, just to keep it the continuity there. Uh, I haven't gone back and actually looked at all these and said, okay, that use is, exact, is, is exactly right. I think you'll see in here some of the names are probably wrong in here too. The old uses, the, some of the cafes and stuff. But, what we could probably do is what we should do is look at that as, as multiple uses over there because they have all the offices up top and most small dry goods stores, they have employees working in the store, but they don't have a whole slew of offices, you know, with five or 10 or whatever people work in the offices. So you would add the office workers, which is 15 gallons a day per person. So you might, you know, you might get a little bit more there if that's what we were looking for. Um, you know, another concept is, is we can, if we think, you know, I don't know what in the, in, in the past, how you decided or how the board decided to put meters in, in a few people and not everybody commercial wise. Uh, I think they thought that they were high users. And if that's a thought over there, maybe, maybe what we do is put a meter in there. Well, I mean, and see what we get. I don't know. But the way the meters work, I'll tell you that the EUs come with a value. So even like GW Plastics, that has a very high EU and they have a lot of consumption, but they get credit for their EUs. 
So it's not like we charge them for an EU and then say, okay, we're going to charge you 100% of what you use, right. consume. Once they go over it. Once they go over that 210 per day times their, their EU, and they pay then they pay down. Yeah. So Bethel Mills may not pay anything additional. I don't know. I mean, I would think, I mean, just coming on to the board there when I did, and we were talking about water then too, and I mean, I guess the way I've always kind of saw it was, you know, some sort of modified EU for residential area, you know. Right. Because a lot of towns, it's based on how many <clears throat> bedrooms you have. You know, not just one, but if you have five bedrooms versus two bedrooms. And in the commercial, I think the only way you can be fair in the commercial end of things is to meter it. You know, it on the commercial sites. You know, because you have... I mean, granted, the, the one that will take it the hardest will be the, you know, will be the laundromat, um, you know, which then you got to figure out. I mean, every town kind of needs a laundromat, and you can't penalize the heck out of a laundromat, or you won't have it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, yeah, metered, yeah. they're, they're metered. They might be, yeah. yeah. There's so, five, I think, in town. Five or six. But yeah, if you if you certain, <laughs> got certain commercial applications. Yeah, we've got then we've got GW, we've got two GW. Dandelion, are there two there? I believe there's two GW. Okay, Dandelion Acres has got one. I think he had five or six, school. right? Maybe there's five. Maybe you're right. Yeah. yeah. But I mean that might be a, you know a thing too. Makes it fair. But with that concept we're, we're yeah, I mean we're still charging for the EUs with the allotment of gallons per day, but and if they you know if they exceed that. It's just because, like what you were talking about, when you get into the mm -hmm. residential, is in some ways kind of easy to figure out, right? Mm -hmm. But there's not as many variables. But when you get to the commercial end of things, there's, you know, yeah. there's gasoline pumps versus, you know, how many people are using the facility or not using the facility or how many bathrooms does it have or not have. Or but but what we have to it's make so sure confusing we're to figure out the fair system. Well, we'll make sure we're doing in the future though. We're not we're making a conscious effort not to kind of double double yeah. up on things. You know, we want we know that that it's based on the use, and that use comes with a certain amount of, of consumption, assumed consumption, and but each use is a little different. In in the past, they were kind of they were doubled up on a few things. I'm not really sure if that was the intent of the the water supply rules table. I don't think it is. But I just don't. But we're making sure. So I, I can definitely go back and. Put a value, an actual build value, to these these EUs. Yeah, it'd be and interesting see, to see what the. And, yeah, and I'll let you know for, and I'll put the percentage of how much of an increase or decrease it is, whatever we can. Yeah, right. Yeah, be good to see that. Yeah. I know on the commercial end of things, it's a lot trickier to figure out. It but is. At least on the residential, it's not that hard. Yeah, residential. You're right. It's kind of cut and dry when you have once everything's based off of the use, and there's so many different uses. Again, Bethel Mills is the prime example. It's a store downstairs. But upstairs, it's more of a it's an office, and that that office is not, to me anyway, is not your typical uh, secondary use of a, of a small dry goods store, because it's not. I mean, you look at Brad over here; it's just he's got a small dry goods store, and it's just him. He doesn't have a slew of people up in an office. Well, I think work. every single commercial property we have is probably different. Yeah, you know, could be. They're all shaped just a little bit different. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's it. That's kind of the beginning of this. If there's anything else, you know, I will start making those changes. Uh, are there any questions, anything that you'd like to see, or questions about how I got there? I think it's good that we well, continue to, to do the research. Continue to explore it's our three, options. It's, mine. it's not three bedroom, one two. Well, come on in. <laughs> yeah, come in. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not. I tell you, I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say right. that. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that we got every one of these things perfect because they're they're not. Under the best. Well, it probably never got it. It never got changed. I'm yeah, sure. Right. Sure. You're probably still being taxed tax for. A, are you being taxed for a three bedroom too? Probably. I bet you are. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Ooh. 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 You're in the money. Yeah. <laughs> I lost the bathroom out of my place, and it saved me some pretty good money. Yeah. Because uh, the guy didn't tell him that he took his bathroom out. Huh. No, I'm going to take a look. I'm sure it's got some money. Okay, so I'll add the uh, the money value percent difference. Okay. Any wow. other conversation you guys want? The town owned land, sellable parcels, you, you probably don't have that ready. I don't have a lot for you. I, I can tell you that I went through every single one we had. It was a huge, a uh, large list and two of them we can sell if we want to. Uh, one is a, a property off of Camp Brook that 
we bought in tax sale a couple of years ago. Uh, the, owner, the, the previous owner is still living there. I'm trying to evict him. I'm working on that right now. Uh, the other property is this little piece in front of the trailer up here that I won't let you sell because I want it for a parking lot someday. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two that are actually sellable. We do have a couple other properties that were FEMA buyouts that we could sell, but there are deed restrictions that say if you if you sell them, you have to you can't do anything. Right. You can't build on them. You can't. So they're kind of. You could get some tax yeah. income. Darn little, because it's absolutely useless land. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you know, there's one, the one on River Street here, maybe the only one I would maybe contemplate. That one next to that house that's for sale on River Street. Um, that lot next to him is actually town up. And he mows it, but you, you're one, right. It's, the one on the other side of the road from there. Uh, it's, I don't know if it would, anybody would really want to. We could sell it. Yeah, but I think that's that corridor area. Well, one of them we've got is our access down to the beach down there under the bridge. Uh, but you, you know, can't build them. Though. You just no, can't build them. No, no, no. Can't, can't do anything. anything on I mean, somebody like Paul Feeney wanted to buy it to have extra life. Right. Or that's yeah. what I thought about. I was interested in buying it back in the day before it got. Yeah. So those, so the FEMA properties yeah. with some with some tags on them could be sold. Uh, the one next to River Street is the one I thought because the guy is trying to sell it. He probably could sell it if he had some property there. But Although it's useless property. Right. Uh, so, yeah, there's really not a whole lot out there to, to really liquidate and get rid of. So, pretty much just the Camp Brook one is just that one, which we're working on. Uh, the idea with that one, honestly, is I've reached out to him and because he's still living there and told him that, hey, if you can come in and, and buy this for what we paid for it, I don't know why I keep buying it. I really don't know why because it's way up there. We would never use it for anything. It's a house. It's, it's So, I told him, hey, if you can give me the money, if you can come up with the money and, and pay what we paid for it, pay us back, plus closing costs or whatever, take it. And I gave him three months to come back and have everything. So we're now gonna, our attorney's writing a nice letter to evict. It's getting ready for squatting season, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'm hoping the letter, when he gets that, maybe it'll, it'll push a little bit to come in. What do you got? Talk well, about get to oh, eight, way get about 18 days. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah but it's, something. he's been in it long enough. It's, yeah, it's, it at least lets us do the process. I mean, it's good That's to, a long-term process, anyway. It's good to you know look at the list every year or two to see what's on there. Yeah. Is there any opportunities? Because obviously, if we have land that we can sell, that someone can buy and we can collect tax revenue off of, it's, yep. it's good. Yeah. I was real surprised that we didn't have more, to be honest with you. Because there was a pretty large list, but most were you know, a lot of cemeteries and churches. and Because those were not just our properties. Those were tax-exempt properties on that list. Oh. Uh, so it was a little bit confusing. Yeah, so that's really all that that is, and uh, I'll keep you up to date what's going on with uh, the property on Camp Roof. Uh, like I said, best case is he comes in and just says, hey, I'll buy it back. Mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't, we'll put it on the market. We will. We'll evict him and we'll put it on the market. Yeah, we'll evict him and get it an agent or whatever and we'll put it on the market. There's a cutoff date when you can't evict. Right, but the process takes six months anyway. Right. So the paperwork and all that will yeah. do through the winter. Over. I think right. it's October right. October 1st to uh, April 1st. Maybe. Yeah, so by April 1st, maybe we'll be ready. Yeah. I really think he'll come up with the money. I really do. I know. It's not well, it's it's not a huge amount of money, huh. but we'll see. Okay. see where it goes. All right. Meeting minutes from September 10th. Oh, you missed it. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. We had a set of meeting dates. My bad. Yep. We get our meetings for October. Right now, <coughs> our first meeting lands on Columbus Day. Um, calendar here. So our yeah, our first meeting of the month lands right on Columbus Day. We I guess the option is we can we can push our meeting back. Right to the eighth. I'm sorry, from the eighth to the fifteenth. But then we would have back to back. We'd have a back to back session for right. a month. Are we good with doing back to back? We've done it before. Or you've got the 29th. You've, you've got an extra week that month too. Or because it's a right because we have five Mondays. Yeah, we could do the fifteenth and the 29th. That's mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it kind of spreads it out. Yeah, it keeps your two week interval. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm good. To, we good? So, yep. 15th so and 29th? 15th and 29th. Okay. Perfect. 
And that still gives you two weeks to the next meeting in November. Perfect. Everybody good to both days? Dave, you good with those? Okay. Um, since we're talking about meetings, um, I just wanted to let the board know as a whole that uh, starting in October, we'll be teaching a after school program in Rochester. And there's a highlight. That's in October. Sorry, it's sorry. starting in October, but it will go through the rest of the school year. So. Okay. So we show you bake something. Yeah. Oh, bring, bring us down to bribe with. Bring us dinner. Goods. Goods. I'll, I'll bring you something for the kids. There you go. All right. So we are good with that. And again, like I said at the beginning there, uh, it was brought to my. I've seen it. Seen it. Mm -hmm thought about it a few times here in the last year, and it seems like it's collecting more and more artwork down there. Um, and then I did have two people that had mentioned it to me yeah. on, hey, is there any way we can paint over that? And I said, well, I don't know, because, you know, it's the state's bridge. Do we have, you know, do we have to ask the state if we have maintenance jurisdiction that yeah, we probably could paint over it? But you know, you need to deal with the railroad, too. You know, yeah, I'll just call Chris. I'll call Chris Bump with the trans and he'll let me know. So, I don't know, you know, let's just explore our options, is yeah. it, you know, yeah. can we go down there with, uh, you know, five gallons of paint and paint over that stuff, or do we, can we not, or? Yeah, I'll call, like, so Chris Pump is, he's the, uh, the region maintenance engineer or whatever, I, I'll call him, he'll know, um, it's about, we may just put a ticket in it and he'll, he'll get it work for I'll walk down there, it's about eight feet high. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. So, they've, uh, they've gotten quite a bit down there. Um, that's rough surface time. Yeah, I will reach out. And but you saw it a lot. A lot of people had parked in. Notice the, the hot pink, out. the hot pink stuff. Really yeah, yeah. 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 So I want to bring that. I'm sure everybody knew about it. Just um, what we can do about that, and um, we'll do. I mean, I know it's hard to police that type of stuff, but you know, maybe at least we can. Yeah, it's a nice clean slate for them. Okay, I will check into it. All right, and select board meeting minutes for. Did we have minutes for last month? You said the 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 last second meeting in August. There was um, it didn't include the decision from the executive session, and they didn't well, want to right. approve it until that was on there. And so the next day I put it on there, and because <coughs> it's a good break had said that to me, and I just hadn't. Made the edit, so I apologize for that. So, yeah, I'm not sure if they're in there or not. I haven't been. It's not. Or not. Okay, well, well it I might be in the big book, but it's not in our packet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't on <coughs> that. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Uh, okay. 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 Have you heard anything about any complaints about Louisville? Bridge 33 being shut down? I haven't heard anything. Yeah. No. Good. So are they not in there? Yeah, we got to do the one before. Yes, the August. Right. Yeah, two to sign here. Okay. okay, so I need you to approve the August ones also. Are you not? You don't have any package. Okay. We'll do it next time. So let's do. Uh, what is it? Get, get an approval uh, a motion to accept the meeting minutes of September 10th as written. So no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who's going to do it? All right, so select board minutes on the agenda. Up the top. Okay. okay. Yep. Then down in the appointments, we've got Louis Griffin, Dee Graffini, and Mail. Oh, Louis yeah, no, uh, what's his name? Shane. Yeah. <laughs> Shane King. Shane King. So, and it's uh, 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 minutes, not agenda. And Shane Kinsley. Okay. So, so over on um, minutes and communication. Mm -hmm. Talk about 
Dr. Green Mountain Pipeline for machine that will help clean up storm drains, not cold. I right. sucking out storm drains with the Green Mountain Pipeline. Okay. Oh, yeah. Storm drains. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. So that right here. It's actually endless. Endless. Oh, okay. Whatever you want to call it. Greater is called No, you're going to be nitpicking. You might go, D is a D, not a T. That's right. Endless, not culverts. It is? Okay. Okay. I think greater is called a D, right? D. Yeah. Greater. It's not like a cheese grater. It's like a. It is kind of like a cheese grater. No, it's back up. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, no, cheese player is with a T. Yeah. So, yeah. This is okay. a All right. Uh oh, let me see you step in. Um, Tag team time. On the third page, uh, motion to approve the LEMP, not LEMP. Okay. Uh, Ooh, good catch. Uh, change <laughs> to. So next time we'll have both of those revised in the packet. Or no, they should be fine. We should be able to sign as is. Did you say that the one from August is not? It's not in there. So we'll, I'll get August. I'll get the 24th back to you. Okay. 24th and the 10th. So yeah. 10th. Yeah. Okay. Well, there are three or something. Maybe. 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 <laughs> sure have at least two. Yeah. All right. All right. So we'll get this up there again. And. <laughs> You guys all have a chance to look at the constable report. Yeah, I have a question about that. Um, Greg, we had talked a little bit about splitting the time, mm -hmm. the cost of uh, Mark's time when yep. it goes to the seminars and whatnot. Yes. And I noticed on this one, on the you know, first page here, is 11 hours at a daily training thing, so I'm wondering if we do we need a policy? Do we need some way to be able to pull these out to make sure that uh, they're still in the car? Yeah, I'll talk to him. I, I talked to him about the after you had asked about it, and he said that he tries to split them up like he'll use uh, one of the other towns' cruiser, and then he'll do something else with another town so that he figures in his head that's splitting it up. So I'm, with, I'm kind of with you, I don't agree. That's really it. He's, he's trying, I think, to, uh, to accommodate what we're trying to ask him to do through different means. Like the last time it was, well, where the other towns are paying for the hotels and the food, and Bethel's paying for my time. That's how he was trying to, to kind of divvy it up between everybody. Yeah, we paid for the training also. On that and, and his time there. And his time there too. So yeah. Uh, yeah, let me, let me sit down with him and make sure that we come up with a better strategy. Okay. okay. That, yeah, but that's just miles, just telling you. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 Our cruiser too. Okay. Yeah. So maybe just come up with a see if we can come up with a better system. Well, I think he just needs to give me his what well, he's you know a better understanding of what he's doing so that we can we can divvy it up like it should be. I mean, I, I can see if I don't, he's doing multiple trainings. It's hard not to one training one day of the training and then cool. build a different town for a different day of training. Well, I'll have to check his time card to see. Did you? Check the time card to see. I haven't if, seen him yet this week. Oh, that's all verified to see if, he's, if it's on his time card. I'll see him tomorrow. This, this, cause this is just his report, so it may be that he's you know, just, giving it out on his time yeah, card. Yeah, I don't know. Just yeah. Like I'll, I'll just have to, let me, I'll mark this one and verify his time card, because that's what we talked about last time. And I, I asked him about it, talked to him about it. Yeah. Um, that may be just that he's working in 
for the town of Bethel those hours, or right. he's showing that he was representing us or something. You know, I'll check the time for him. Okay. Let's see, you got uh, somebody in a 70 and a 50. The uh, Sand Hill gravel pit thing, Brady, was that? So, yeah, I think you have that day. Uh, actually, Mrs. Placey came in uh, <coughs> Thursday or Friday, excuse me, Thursday or Friday and signed the contract. Um, uh, I'm debating back and forth really if I want to use the pit or not. Oh, no, I'm talking about the incident with the gravel pits on the P line. Well, we decided on that. Is that does he have that in here? Did yeah. he go out? Yeah. Well, I mean, probably be around. Because what we decided, he came back in and we looked at where they were digging. You're talking about the back row that was yeah. out there digging. Yeah. Yeah. We looked on an area where he was digging, and it looked as though he was really, really close, but he was on his own property digging. What we need to find out is he did, really, if we want to take this next step, we can make a call to the state because he does not have a current. Um, Act 250 permit that we had to go through to get our gravel pit up here. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty confident he probably does not have that permit. Now, if you would like me to make that call to the state, I will. Uh, but well, I know there's some concern about whether he's undermining. Well, yeah. I mean, technically he was on. Technically he was on his own property, um, and he because well, my concern was he was on our property digging our material there. It's really more of a civil issue as far as the undermining because it's it, it is it's it's sloughing off and the people that live up there on the end of bicentennial it's it's sloughing off part of their well it's it's his property really but it will get into their property eventually so there is an issue there it's it's more of a civil problem that the town shouldn't get involved with but if we're concerned with uh, safety or a pit not being being run legally. <laughs> which I'll tell you, this is probably not the only one in town or the only one in this general area. Um, then we can make a call. I can make a call and say, hey, I, I think there's a pit running and I don't know if they have a, I know they don't have an Act 250 permit. I looked at the, um, their website, the state's website, and they don't have an Act 250 permit. Um, I can do that. If you guys would like me to, I can make that call. <clears throat> What's the other option? Let's see if we go to the the other option is that he's basically got, it's, it's an issue with, it's a safety issue, and it's, it's an issue with the surrounding neighbors. Um, so they would have to group up and hire an attorney? Or somebody would have to make a call. One of those, I would think just one of them. Yeah. One of those landowners could make a call to the state and say, hey, somebody's digging down back here. I don't think they've got a permit. I looked at your website. I don't see that they have an active permit. Yeah. What are you going to do? That's the recommendation I would make. Mm -hmm. yeah, Exactly right. They would have slope stability requirements. You got it. You got it. Storm water, all sorts of stuff. Yes. Yes, you're right. But I don't know if we want to make that call or if we want to just make. I mean, if it's hampering our, you know, if, if, if it's getting into a position where, um, you know, either there's storm water discharge onto our property because of his digging or, or if there's undermining of, right. of our property, then. I haven't really. I something that we would want to take a look at. I've looked at it just from the road. I haven't really gone in there too far. I don't see much, but I haven't heard anything from like the guys at the shooting range or anything like that. that what I've heard more is from people on Bicentennial, because that's his property. That's the way he's going. Is that whatever way that is? He's going that way, uh, and continues to go that way. And what he does is he digs underneath, and of course it sloughs off, and he digs all and it sloughs off. And so I don't know if it's, it's necessarily impacting us nearly as much as it's going to eventually impact those people on my system. They should be the ones that are calling mm -hmm. I, I would think one of those people should make a call. We don't have any infrastructure in there. Or maybe just, just educate them. Yeah. If, if they ask, then you can. And I have. You know, there's a, there are a few that live there that I've talked to. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. And as far as the other gravel pit, I was with Mrs. Yeah, Placey. Yeah. She signed a contract. Uh, for us to take the material uh, at a really good price. Um, talk to Alan. I've been going back and forth later on. I want to use material. I think talk with Alan that we'll try it this year and just kind of see how it goes. Uh, so I've got the crushers coming in, hopefully coming in within the next two to three weeks. And they'll crush as much 
stone, rock, um, as we can afford to do. And then we'll also be um, putting some topsoil down on the first couple acres that were exposed, that were required to do. That'll most likely be with just a, a loader and maybe grader. We'll just kind of have to see how that goes. Yeah. Well, we're going to look and see if any of our buddies, Alan's made pretty good relationships with the neighboring towns. Um, so he's going to see if anybody's got a dozer that we can borrow. And if we can do that, that'd be great. Just push that dirt right over. Um, so we'll probably get that thing running within the next couple weeks. So you are going to get what you want before frost or snow. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be probably no more than three weeks before we start running that thing. We're going to run it for whatever it is we did last time. How much? Uh, probably 10 days, something like that. Until they get it. Right, exactly. And then we get it. LMP, L-E-N-P plan. Yep, so that's just your copy. So you know what to do whenever it hits yeah. the fan. We saw the DRB uh, permit application. Yep. Yes. It's in there. Yep, so the, uh, the, the rec master plan is on the agenda for the next DRB meeting. We'll be, we'll be presenting that then, and hopefully we'll get some, some feedback on that and see where it goes. And the E911 letter from last time. How long does everybody have to change over? I think it's a work in progress. I don't know if they've necessarily established that, because the towns are going to help out with this. Mm -hmm. um, we've okay. actually gotten, or we received a few letters. By the first of the year? I was going to say, there's a date in this letter about when well, that's when they're going to start. Yeah. They're start July, January 1st. I don't know if it says how long you have to do it. I think it's just we start on that date. Oh. You know, I think it's implied that well, it'll be, that'll be the date you have to do it. But there should be what? a date in here that, so that everybody on, like a, a in the area date. knows that my address has changed as of such and such a date. Did you say January 1st? Uh, the letter? I got a point there. Here's project timeline. It says January 1st will be our target date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The change over to the new address is January 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. New ready somewhere. And we've gotten a few people that have emailed us that, that don't like it. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen. Okay. Any other business? Um, one quick item that was uh, asked to be brought up. Greg kind of brought to my attention that uh, the flag pole out here, and I noticed also the one in Fort Porter to you leave the flags up all the time, and that's not regulation if they're not lit. It doesn't have a light behind it up to it? Yeah. Uh, no, sure. Uh, so Which one? So he was asking the town to, he was just asking the town to consider these things. Um, no, I, I get it. So yeah. I don't know in terms of this one, I think, is a lot easier than probably some of the other ones, like Divine or uh, Fort Porter 2. So, uh, you got Town Hall, Fort Porter 2, Divine Park. Probably the other, they put up the poles in every cemetery, didn't they? Probably so. What I have, we can get these things as solar panels. I have those on my flagpole at home. It's just a solar thing that at you know, night it lights up and it's shining down on the light. Yeah. Each one of us takes one. Yeah. And that's what we <laughs> 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 Okay. Uh, we'll look into it. I'll donate a light. Yeah. That's something like a good job for Doug. Yeah. We do know someone that does electric. So. Now, my question is, uh, is about lighting. Is we have, because I've seen it, we have the light to repair the light at the end of the River Street Bridge. That light has been out for in excess of a year and a half. Oh, longer than excess. Um, I don't know who we need to call. I think we need to make that call and say, what the heck? So that We're bridge getting in the season where it's dark and people might be walking home. That bridge belongs to V-Trains. We have given the maintenance people, what's his name? Uh, Chris? No, uh, Slack. Uh, 
he has that light. He right. has all the, everything that came with that light sitting in his office, waiting to be put up. So I was told not to touch that freaking light because it belongs to the Beatrice. So they have everything they We call Chris Bumps or somebody in this. I call him. And uh, Mr. Get a date out of him. Uh, Mr. Geico calls him constantly. Oh, yeah. Because he calls me constantly about it. That's what I tell him is it's their life. We give them everything that we have. We had all the fixture stuff. You're right. We gave it all to them because they said we were going to do it. So I think we should ask them if they would like to assume responsibility, liability, if someone was to be injured yeah. because of a dark spot. <laughs> you, know, I think, you know what? At this point, it might be good is for us to um, send a letter, uh, a written correspondence to the, to the district in regards to that. And maybe some language like Dave was saying. And CC some important people. Just just have it documented. This isn't way too long. Send, yeah. send a formal yeah, letter to the district. Yeah. Um, All right, I can do that. some language but in there about it's, safety concerns. It's and been told to me that it's B trans, it's in their hands, it's their lights, their red. So we said, okay, great, here's all the stuff. Go for it. And I know that Mr. Geico had gotten an answer from them saying that it will be to do it next week, and that will probably be. Well, they don't, do it, they, they don't do it within the next month and a half. They'll be flat on snow, and then they won't do it. Uh, yeah. Next year. yeah, I'll reach out to them. So, yeah, I, a letter a lot of times gets people's attention. I won't do that. Maybe Bernie. Yeah, we'll call Bernie. Uh, just so you all are aware. Just so you're aware, in case anybody complains, when there are uh, political signs in the right of way, I yank them. Just yep. so you know. I just wondered about that sign. And they sit in the back of my truck, and so if somebody wants to come pick them up, they're welcome to. I usually drop them off at, at the office when I'm done, but I've been yanking them out of the right of way. So in case anybody calls. Yeah, they're not supposed to put them in the right of way. There's one on the car. I haven't done that far yet. This is right over here. There's one up here in the car. Okay, I'll get it tomorrow. This is right here at the little. The little <laughs> It's that time of year. <laughs> it is. Well, I, but, so I do hang on to him if anybody wants it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else to come before?